The contact form, very important. I think you should always have one. You never know what kind of business you can generate by people who find you online. We can also talk a lot about the challenges that come with putting your details out there on the internet. That's a discussion for another day. What we have here is a map, a map on the left, and then we have on the right a form element. A free element in Brizzy, I'll always wax lyrical about that, getting that for free, because you have no idea that that is actually a premium feature. So let's see how we are going to do that. First question, how do we divide this page? You can see two columns, but do note that the column on the left is slightly narrower than the column on the right. Let's go into Brizzy, scroll to the bottom, add a new block, create your own, click in the middle, and bring in a column. To make the column on the left slightly narrower than the one on the right, you see this bar in the middle, click, hold, and drag it, and you see we have the control over the width of these columns. At the top, you have a heads-up display. So if I want to put this column on 40 to 60%, I can drag it until I get to 40, 60. If you cannot reach the 40, 60, there's an easier way to do it. Click on the column settings, and then you can just type in next to width the 40%, and then automatically the one next to that will adjust for the full space, which will give you 60%. Bring in the map element. We open the elements panel, and under essentials, yes, it's an essential element, is the map element. Click, hold, and drag. Uh, this is also something that I have to tell you that I'm really fond of Brizzy. Most other builders, you have to bring in an API key from Google and set it up and go through all of that process to use the map element. This free element allows you to just type in the address here and voila, it is done. So I said we were using French names here. So let's say this is in France. I'll go to the map and I'm just going to type in there coffee, coffee shop, and then uh, Paris, Paris, France, Paris, France. And let's see what it does. It's going to choose something randomly there. The Cafotique of Paris. Lovely. Click on the map and you see we have the handlebars again all around it. Click the bottom one and just drag it a little bit. And if you want precise control over that again, you go to the settings and you will see the height here is in pixels. You can also put it in percentage. So let's put it on 600 pixels to keep it nice and smooth and rounded. On the right, we bring in a title where we will say we would like to hear from you, maybe a little bit of a sentence, then a spacer, and finally below that, the form element, which is an essential, essentials element. Click on form, click hold, and drag, and drop it. Let's change the text at the top. We'd, oops, we'd like to hear from you. Hey, my typing is going for a ball this morning. And let's style it out. We put it on caveat brush. I'm going to increase the size until I feel I like what I see. Reduce the letter spacing to minus two. Let's increase that again. Let's put it on 64. And then the line height I'm going to reduce to one. The color I'll put on this dark, dark blue that we've selected at the beginning, the swatch second from the left. And then I will go to this dummy text that we have here. Visit us today for the best brew, brew experience in Paris. The locals prefer. We are the first and the last stop on your journey. Oh, man, where do I get this from? Let's go and change it out. It is on Roboto already, but we can change the line height to minus 1.7, 1.6. I think that is better. And that's it. Let's leave it like that. Change out a little bit of this spacer. We make it a little bit smaller. Now we get to the form element. So what do we want to collect with this form element? We want people to send us a message, find us. And with that, we want to know who you are and your email address. So those three things that we need, we call it fields. When you work with a form, every little block 
that you have to put in information is called a field. So three fields. But here's the thing. Those three fields are different in nature. Their character is different. An email field must be assigned as an email. A name is a short little bit of text, so we often call it short text or just text. And a message is a long piece of text, so we mostly refer to that as a paragraph or long text. Let's start here and see what we've got. The first one is email. If you go to the settings far on the left, you will see it is set to email. That is great. Just have a look at the drop down. You can see there are a number of different fields, but we don't work with all of them. Leave it on email. Make sure it is required. You don't want people sending you all kinds of bad messages and you don't know how to get back at them. All right now, what I want to do is I want to create a field where the person can put in their name. At the options toolbar with the email selected, click on duplicate and it's going to create this one that says email dash one. We don't want that, we want a name. To change this label, you can select it on the page. Again, I triple click and I'll type in name. But remember, the field is still set to email. So go to the options toolbar all the way to the left and next to type, put it on text. And it's required. Now, below this is a default field called select. I don't want this, so click on it and choose delete. And the last one is paragraph. Select the word paragraph and type in your message. And that's all you have to do. You can go to the settings. You will see it's not required. I want it required, so I'll switch it on. But next to type, just note it's put on paragraph. And there you've done that pretty awesome, right? The last one you want to do is change the button. Double click to select the word button and type in in all caps, send message. Okay, send message. And then let's style it out. Go to the button settings on the left. And I think I'm going to leave all of this. Topography next, it's on Roboto. I'll put it on 16. And then I'll put it on medium. And I'll make my letter spacing around two. The only thing I will do now is go to the settings. And I'll reduce the width of this button. And once I've done that, it's at 50%, I'll align it to the right. Change the color all the way to the color. Let's make this a dark button. And for the hover, select hover. The background I will put on white. And the text I will put on a dark blue. Now it will look like this. If someone selects it, it will say send message. That doesn't look right. Let's go to the color, hover, and also add a border. So at least we can see that. Okay, just something a little bit different. We need to add some separation between this block and our testimonial. Now it just feels like it's all part of the same thing, which it isn't. And to do that, we change the background of this block. We bring in an image similar to what we did with the hero section at the top. Click on the block settings, background image. And this will be our second last image we will be using, which is this one over here. It says 05 contact background and click select. And we apply an overlay to it similar like we did at the top. Go to colors, second from the left and put it on 85 or 80. Between 80 and 85. There we go. Now we need to make changes to these. Click on the text, change the color to white. And we do the same for this. Now the gray doesn't work anymore. So we put it on white and click on the form, go to the colors, the background, we're going to make transparent. So grab the transparency slider all the way to the bottom. Then we go to text, click on white, but look here, transparency slider is set to 70%, take it all the way to the top. Border, let's make sure it's the same. White, white, white. And now the button doesn't look right either. So for the button, let's select the button and we switch it around. We make the background white. We make the text this color. And we just leave it like that. I think it works for us. Last but not least, let's add a little bit of spacing here between these two columns, similar to what we did here at the top when we brought in this white space. 
Go to the column settings of the right block, then settings, styling, and we add padding on the left. Now currently it's set to 15 pixels. And if you're confused what I'm doing, I'm going to add space here. This is the padding area that I want to add. And that is going to be the same. So we go to the column settings again, styling, and then the padding is on the left of that column. 15 pixels, I'll just put it on percentage. And once I do that, look, you'll see it adds, oh, that's way too much. So let's bring it down to 5%, see if that is better. 5% is better. And the last thing I'll do is go to the column settings again and just put everything in the center so it balances out nicely. I keep saying the last thing. There's so many last things that we still have to do. Let's go to tablet and see how it looks on the tablet. Oh, not bad, not bad. I think it's good to go here. I'll just reduce. Why is there space? Oh, that's the send message. So what I have here on the tablet, I think it looks good. I'll reduce the spacer a little bit. And I think I like the fact that this is breaking into two lines, but it's unbalanced on the left. So if I click on the map, I grab the bottom handlebar and I'll just drag it a little bit so that we have this balanced again in the middle. Nice. I think this looks good. And then we go to mobile. For mobile, it will be stacked, but you don't want your map first. It's a little bit out of place. Great feature within Brizzy. We can switch these two columns around. So go to the map column, select the column, and you will see these two arrows appear, and they only appear in responsive design, and select them. And this is going to switch them around. So we have now the form at the top and the map at the bottom. And I'm really not going to change much here. I'll click here on the spacer again, reduce that. Add a little bit more space at the top. And for this button, I'll just go to the settings and increase this to around 75%. And the reason I do that is from experience on the smaller devices, it's going to squash the button and your text is going to disappear. Good. And then for the map, this is too this is too much, so I'll go to the bottom and reduce it. It almost feels like the ending of a good movie when you get to this point and you're done. Strictly speaking, you're not done. There's still a lot that you can do, but let's go to the desktop. Control S, Command S. Let's go preview it. Control Shift P, Command Shift P. And I'll close these two tabs so that we don't get confused. Let's have a look. Great. And we have this wacky entrance animation, which I highly recommend you don't do. Then we have the block slider here. Aha, let's go and make the block slider automatic, which means it will have autoplay. You don't have to click on those arrows. Go back into Brizzy. Go to the block, settings for the block, all the way to the left. And where you see, make it slider, there's now also a tab here that says slider. I'll add it to autoplay, and it will keep it at three seconds. You can change that. Update. Go to the front end. Refresh this page. Uh, that coffee looks good. Uh-huh. And look at that. Brilliant. Remember to change the names as well as the content. And here is the form element. In this case, I will say my email. I will say jp at websites for beginners.io. My name is jp. When are you open this Sunday? And then I'll say send message. Your email was not sent. Why was my email not sent? And it's probably because I haven't sent it up, I guess. Let's go and have a look. Go back and we go to the form element and click on the button all the way to the right. You select that little icon and you will see that you have to access the WordPress settings here. You have to set up where the message information will go. Click on it and the email that you have registered with should appear here. You can delete it, add another one, and you can also add a comma after it if you want to send it to more emails than this. Just let me help you quickly here. Someone comes to your website, they type in where does that information goes. It goes to this email address or whichever email you want to use. And actually, this is all you have to add here. Let's just stick to that. 
I'll explain in other videos what you can add here and what the metadata can mean for you. All you need to do now is click on continue and you're done. Now you've set it up. Remember, let's just go and update it again. Go to our front end, refresh this page. And yes, I'm sending this email to myself, but who knows? Let's do it again. Email is jp at w4b.io. My name is JP and does this work? This will be my new question. And click on send message. And this time we'll get green, which is success, baby. Your email was sent successfully. And you can go check your inbox. Email should be there. And then you can start building up these connections. We refer to these connections in the world of website as leads, right? Contacts and people that you can contact and make sales to. Our website has come to its fruition, but we can add a few more things. So I'm not going to call this tutorial to an end. I want to show you how you can add a menu at the top with a logo. And then maybe we can add a little bit of a footer at the bottom if we want to. And then still, we want to update a few things for WordPress, like the favicon I mentioned to you that we want to add at the top and also your site name, your site tagline, and just make a few settings within WordPress so that you can truly get ready to publish this page. And one of the biggest things you may not be aware of is that this is currently not your homepage. If you were to go to WordPress and you type in your address, it will not display this page. It will display the posts archive page. We'll talk about that in the upcoming tutorials.